This lesson is about orthographic projection. Orthographic projection is drawing 2D images from a 3D object of a 3D object. Now, in orthographic projection, we usually have three, three views. The front view, or the front elevation, sometimes known as simply as the elevation, the side elevation, or the end elevation, and the plan. And the plan is always written from the top. Now we've got three setups on how to set your drawings in orthographic. There's first angle and the third angle. Let's go first at first angle. So if I want a view of this object here, of this block, looking for the front view from this arrow here. The side view from this arrow here. So it says if you're standing here, and you're looking at the side view from this angle. And on the top. Now it's very easy to picture it, but you need a bit of uh, organization how to place them in the drawing. So it would make sense to do in the drawing as well. Now let's start off with the front view. I'm going to make a sketch of my setup. The front view is going to be this wide. I'm going to just pick off distances from my drawing. It's going to be that wide and it's going to be that high. That's your front view. If you're looking at the side view from this angle, it would be from that view, from the, from the right hand side looking to the left hand side, you have to place your side view onto the left hand side. Right, so, front and side. You can't switch them around because the first angle tells you that if we're looking from the right, you have to place it on the left. And the plan looking from the top, so since we're looking at it from the top, we're going to place it at the bottom. And that's always in projection with the front view. So we have a front side and a plan. And the plan is always in projection with the front view. Now notice how I've placed my sketches in that shape. The front view is always the middle shape, and the other two views are exactly in projection with it. I'm going to start off with the front view. The front view is usually that view which has most detail. So, this is the width of the front view. Now, first of all, I'm just going to draw crates for my front view. So that's the width and that's the height. It's a bit smaller. So my front view should, sit, should fit in that crate. The side view is in projection with the front view. So it starts on exactly the same baseline. And it finishes also in projection with the front view. Now, how wide is my side view? My side view is this wide. And I'm placing the side view So that's my crate for my side view. So I've got the front here and my side here. Now the plan is always projected from the front view. So taking the two lines that start and finish my plan, I need the plan down here. And there. So it's my plan is the same width as my front view. Like how high it would be? It's going to be the same width as my side view. So taking either distance from there or from there, this gives me the height of my side view.
So I've got the three crates that give me the front side of that. Now I need to add the detail to show my object, to show my drawing. So the front view is an L shape, which starts off from here, and the upright is that distance. This is a very simple shape of just and once you get used to how to set up your drawing, each shape has its particular design to follow. So, so really what the, the front view would look like would be this L shape. That's my front view. Now I'm going to add hidden detail to this because I've got this group here and this circle that can't be shown in the front view. I'm going to add that because you can add hidden detail. The groove is this way, this wide. And all I need to do is for that groove is to show the edge of that groove as a broken line. So that gives me that hidden detail. This circle is a stencil along this upright has a radius that wide and I'm going to show also hidden detail at its edges to show that that's a true hole I'm going to show that center line so that's my front view can fit the hidden detail now for the plan, I'm going to use the projections for my front view. This upright projected onto the plan gives me this line here. From the hidden detail, I'm going to draw another faint projection line. And these two lines will help me show once you've got the detail in the front view you can use those details to help you find the location of them of their their location in the other two views. Now I'm going to find the distance of the groove taken from here onto the other edge. So my groove is this groove, not my groove, is there. So that's the view from the top. Get to add hidden detail also to this, starting off with the center line. Same width for the true hole. Radius there. So notice the difference between the two broken lines. All right. The center line goes a bit up from the drawing. A hidden detail has equal distances in line up to the edge of the drawing. Now my side view. My side view. I'm going to take this edge. The lower point. So the side you're looking from here, you're going to see this edge, and that's going to be broken into three parts. Now you can just measure these off from the side view, or by projecting as if it were a mirror. I'm going to take a line from the plan, top of most part of the plan. Edge of the side view closes to the front view. Where those two points meet, I'm going to draw this 45 degree angle. Now, this 45 degree angle has a mirror line. Now, it's the other way around because I don't want a mirror image. I want what's on the left to remain on the left. So, taking this distance to this to this slot here, 
and this distance from this slot here where it's the 45 degree line I'm going to project upwards to get the detail in my side view yeah. what's that is the true hole so the true hole I'm not going to use the portfolio degree line because it's very simple I'm going to just find the midpoint and then draw it draw in a circle as seen from the front so it would appear as a circle manage with this compass to draw such a tiny circle So there's my front side plan in the first thing. Now what I failed to mention is that the setup that is the presentation of front side and plan is that the distances between each view should be split out equally. The distance here, here and here to the edge of the paper should be split out equally. So to have um, uh, a better presentation. And even the names of the views, I've just scribbled them in. So it should be done with proper lettering. Now what could change in a front view? I could have had the side view from the opposite direction that is looking from the left and it wouldn't be placed on the left here, it would have been placed on the right. So remember, if you're looking from the right, you place it on the left in the first angle. And the last the final thing, the symbol for first angle projection looks something like this. Alright, so that's a frustum, it's a truncated cone. If you're looking from this end of the first one, you see two circles, two concentric circles. And that's the symbol for first angle. Now, how would have this changed if it were in third angle? You would have exa the exact same drawings, but in different setup. So, if in third angle, third angle, the rules change a bit. I'm just going to sketch it and to show you what third angle would have looked like. So I would have had this set up. The exact same front view, but this time the front view would have been placed at the bottom. Now if you're looking in third angle from the left, the front view is placed on the left. If you're looking at the side view from the right, the side view is placed on the right. And obviously if you're looking at the plan from the top, the plan would be placed on top. So that's the only difference that third angle makes is the way you set them out, the way you set them out on on your paper. It would have looked exactly the same as we did in our drawing, an L shape with a hidden detail and a hidden detail for the through hole there. The side view would have looked the same. Edge there and the circle. And the plan would have looked the same as well with the slot in the middle and the triple there. So the exact same shape but shuffled around a bit to give you third angle. And the symbol for third angle is just switched around. So you've got the concentric circles in front and the edge and the frustum. The front of the frustum is shown at the back. That's your symbol for third angle. Thanks again for following my lesson.